Well, today I wanted to talk to you about one. I'm smoking again Shelby mix, and uh, that has turned out uh, better as it's set. Well, it's a pretty good, pretty good mix for me. I enjoy it. Um, it's improved a little bit over the uh, last time we've had it, and I think it's just had time to kind of set and meld together. Still not as good as that stuff Richard sent me. I think uh, the reason was because of uh, the fact that uh, it had that aged barking dog in it. But uh, still, I would say this is, you know, it's a good uh, kind of all day smoke, very mild, um, easy to smoke, you know, no tongue bite or anything like that. And if you haven't uh, watched any of the other videos, uh, Shelby's mix is a combination of uh, two-thirds Edward G. Robinson uh, pipe tobacco and uh, one-third Match Barking Dog. So uh, if you have any interest in that, uh, I would say it's not bad. I also uh, today would wanted to share with you um, something else that I've recently gotten into. Uh, I find that uh, I find that uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to smoke pipe everywhere, uh, be it at work or you know uh, whatever. And um, and I discovered a snooze, and uh, I just kind of happened upon it. I started off. I found some, uh, I was in a store and I saw a camel snooze, which they've got out. Uh, and that is really, hmm, you know, it's just sweet. It's just a sweet concoction. Uh, somebody uh, uh, said it's like uh, sweet tea, it tastes like sweet tea, and they're not too far off. It really does it kind of taste like sweet tea, um, really sweet tea. So, um, but then it got me, uh, to investigating because I have some friends over in Europe and I've heard them mention snooze before and uh, I hadn't had no experience with it uh, although I had had dip and uh, dip if you think of Copenhagen or Skoll you know I even uh, back in my younger days when I worked at a, a sawmill everybody used to do Levi Garrett chew you know and um, so I was familiar somewhat with that end of it, but snooze is a little bit different. And uh, I would say it's better uh, than dip or uh, of course, you know, chew is something totally different. But uh, it, it, tobacco has an interesting history. I mean, if you think about it, um, discovered here in the Americas, taken over to Europe, uh, became the uh, habit of the uh, nobility. Uh, then at some point, you know, they tried to outlaw it. And uh, then the, by that time it had gotten into the hands of the common man and, and they weren't letting go of it. It was kind of like prohibition in this country, you know, uh, it wasn't going to fly. And, uh, but at one, at some point they discovered in the military that if you gave a man tobacco, you could give him less food and he was happy. And uh, so <laughs> if you uh, look at the history of uh, the Navy, particularly uh, in Britain, and uh, I don't know about here, I would think it would be the same. I've just read about it over there in, in Britain, but, uh, or England. And, um, but they would give a ration of tobacco and they would give a ration of rum to all of the sailors. Uh, it started off as like pipe tobacco. You know, initially they got uh, pipe tobacco and I don't know how long that continued, um, but 
I believe in Sweden, um, at some point they went to snooze. Now, why would they go to snooze instead of pipe tobacco? And I think it's in part because uh, with pipe tobacco, you would, you know, they would, you've seen the, the rolls of uh, pipe tobacco where they make a long roll, you know, they roll it out, make this long salami like uh, stick of tobacco. They would cut it in the coins or they just keep it in the sticks, you know, on the ship. And, uh, and I imagine that took up a lot of space. And I think in uh, Sweden, they figured out that if you ground it up super fine and made a snooze out of it, uh, probably that they could pack a lot more and uh, a lot easier. Not sure about that, but that's my guess. Um, and that's what they do with snooze. So snooze was actually a derivative of snuff. So at a certain point in history, snuff became really um, um, popular. And snuff was they would take the tobacco and they would just grind it. And they had like this big mortar. I've seen, uh, I think it's Galwith and Hogarth. Uh, there's a video on them uh, grinding tobacco. And they've got this big metal uh, mortar and pedestal that just goes around, spins around and around and around, and they just grind the tobacco down to a fine powder. So they created snuff from that. That snuff was just a fine tobacco powder that they would sometimes add uh, different, you know, essences and flavors to, and, and people would, you know, uh, put it in their nose and sniff it and, uh, they would carry around the little boxes, you know, and again, that became something popular among the nobility. And it uh, later, you know, trickled down into the common man. Um, but for some reason that I'm not aware of why, the um, people in Sweden decided to add salt and water to that. And instead of putting it up their nose, uh, they would use it like a dip and uh, I have an example here of one that uh, now this is this is the oh I think the oldest recipe uh, that's out there and I'll show that to you um, it's one of the oldest original recipes comes like that um, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce these words these are beyond me but uh, they are, this one here is really good. It's got some uh, essence of rose hips in it. But normally, I like the ones that are in the pouch. Now, this is the old-timey style, if you will. And it comes like that right there. And uh, so, snooze is a combination of fine ground tobacco and um, salt and water and then any essences that they might add. So you would take something like that. I don't know if you can see that very well. Take something like that, and you would stick it into your gums. Uh, and that's another thing that's kind of peculiar. In, in Europe, they stick it in their upper gum, you know, but if you've ever done any dip here in the US, we always put it in our lower gums. And I don't know what the significance of that is, but uh, that's the way it's done over there. And so that's uh, probably what you would find in the 1850, early 1900s. That's the way snooze was made. Now, as time has progressed, um, they have gone to these pouches. And now they put them in these pouches. And it's a lot less messier. I really like this one a lot. It has a very low nicotine level to it. Uh, snooze comes in a variety of different levels of nicotine. And when you go to buy them online, uh, they actually list the amount of nicotine. So that's very good. Uh, and for those of you like me who don't like a lot of nicotine, I just want, you know, just the bare minimal. And uh, for me, it's about the flavor of the tobacco and then also the few little essences they put in there but i like a little bit of nicotine as well so um but mo 
most of these I'm going to show you very low nicotine. Um, but they started at some point, like I said, using the pouches. Um, there's a couple, I think this one here. Now these are all made now, I believe. Most of these, I believe that I'm going to show you, not all of them, are made by a single company in Sweden. Um, the company that makes this one that I showed you that was loose also, I believe, makes this one, which is a very old brand general snooze in sweden general snooze comes in a variety of different uh flavors there's winter green the first one i showed you was original um and this one macamara i believe is how that said and i'm not sure who they are because it says general in collaboration with macamara um created this one which has a, a little bit of a whiskey uh, flavor in it I believe and um, so this uh, general snooze is some of the older snooze general snooze can be had here in the US if you go to uh, if you just google general snooze locator um, a uh, you can just put in your zip code or name of your city and it will pop up a map everywhere that these are sold in your area. They sell these now at like a uh, chain uh, gas stations. Uh, and it's a high quality product. Don't let that be in fact that it's being sold at a gas station fool you. It's actually of all the ones that I'm getting ready to show you, General Snooze is a high quality snooze. They've been in business a long time so they're able to produce uh, a lot, you know, so they're able to push out product. That's why they're here in the U.S. and they're able to uh, send them out to all of these stores. We have a chain of stores called Come and Go uh, gas stations and they carry this. And, and all snooze is generally refrigerated. I haven't seen any that's not refrigerated. So behind the counter, they'll have a very small refrigerator with a, a couple uh, lines of, uh, or I don't know what you call them. They come in like a pack of 10 and they'll have them inside these uh, little refrigerators, keeping them fresh. Uh, you don't have to, I keep mine in the refrigerator cause I ended up buying some online. And uh, because it's all shipped from Sweden, uh, the uh, price for shipping in here cost me about $21. So I ended up buying about uh, 12, uh, I think 12 or 13 different ones, uh, just so, you know, uh, I wasn't ate up with uh, shipping cost and kind of even it out across uh, the board. General snooze, if you buy it locally, costs around $8. So you, that cost you about $8 here. You get 24 portions. Um, and how much you use is dependent upon you. Uh, I've got a good friend in Germany and uh, he uses quite a bit. I think he goes through 15 tins a month. So he's going through about a half a, a, half a tin per day, which seems kind of, you know, for me seems kind of high. But I'm, a, I'm kind of, of a newbie on this, so. But hopefully I won't get that high with it, because uh, that's uh, that's quite a bit, you know, four dollars a day <laughs> to do a habit like that. But uh, anyway, they come in a lot of different uh, flavors and a lot of different styles, a lot of different, like I said before, nicotine levels. I had read a pretty good article, and they had suggested some, and so. I uh, ordered some of those because I knew absolutely nothing about them. Um, this one is another uh, old recipe that is very good. I like this one a lot. I find that very enjoyable. The nicotine level on it is, uh, I would say, uh, on the low end of moderate. Comes in pouches. These are large pouches. Now they make what they call a slim portion. Uh, and I'd have to open this one. I haven't 
open this, but that's okay. I keep them in the fridge, so not a big deal. But they come in, uh, that would one I just showed you would be a regular portion. And then they have what they call a slim portion, which is just uh, a different style of a pouch. And huh, these don't look that amazing. I'm gonna put them side by side, we'll see. So that's supposed to be a slim portion. And I, so here is a standard one. And then here is a slim. Uh, let's see if I can get that in there. And so they're a little bit slimmer. Makes them a little bit easier to uh, have in your mouth, I suppose. Although I don't find any problem with the original size. Um, you take these and you put them... I put them on either side of my mouth on the bottom, uh, up against my gum, between the cheek and gum. Um, if you think of the old Copenhagen commercial, pinch between your cheek and gum. And, uh, and then you just kind of leave it there and they're good for, you know, at least an hour. They're good for an hour and maybe more, just depending. And, and they're pretty, pretty good. So, I really enjoy the original General Snooze. That one can be had locally. Uh, this one here, I really enjoy. I can't pronounce it, but I enjoy it. And uh, I really like this one. Now this was the loose one, but it's loose and I really don't like the loose. Uh, with this one, you put it in, you make a ball, you know, and you put it in there and then it just kind of gets like muddy, you know, in your mouth and it kind of sinks in your gums and, and then when you try to get it out, you know, once you're finished, it's kind of a mess. Uh, but I really like this one. I wish they put it in a pouch. Um, another one. And I do enjoy this one with the whiskey. That's a, again, General Snooze, very good one. This one here is very good as well, Odin's. Now Odin's is a different brand. It carries a lot of uh, different ones. This one has a bit of a licorice flavor and uh, I find it's uh, very good. Uh, there's another one that I could not find that's I believe made by Odin's as well uh, that has a, a different kind of proportion of uh, licorice that I heard is really good. But this one I enjoy, it's very, very tasty. This one here as well I like. Now this one's very interesting. This one and actually uh, this one as well, both have a juniper uh, essence. This one is a lot lighter in that juniper essence. And this one is a lot stronger in the juniper essence. And this one also supposedly has, uh, I believe, um, viola flavor, which is some kind of flowery flavor to it. It That's not real distinct, it's there, but it's just barely there. So you got tobacco and you got this kind of juniper. This one is pretty strong on the juniper. Not real strong, but it's just noticeable, uh, more so than the other one that I showed you. And, not, and that's not a bad thing. They also come, eat, all of them come with this little lid on them. They all have uh, that one, this one. They all come with these lids. And I guess that's so you could put your uh, used portion in there, I guess. I mean, I hate to say it, I just spit mine out. But uh, maybe over in Sweden, they don't like you spitting them out. But... Uh, Anyway, that's kind of an interesting little deal. So that's snooze. Snooze is, uh... now here's something else that's interesting about snooze. I was reading up on it. The rate, you know, as smokers, we're always, not always, but I mean, I am at least marginally concerned about cancer. I mean, nobody wants to get cancer. What's interesting about snus is, you know, as a pipe smoker, I guess I should clarify this first. As a pipe smoker, you know, we have a much lower rate of 
chance of cancer than say cigarette smokers. Most of the uh, research done on cancer and smoking is related to cigarettes. Uh, pipe smoking is much lower. Uh, and as far as uh, lung cancer, it's like very low. Uh, it's generally mouth cancer or throat cancer that you have problems with concerning uh, pipe smoking. But again, it seems like it's, it's pretty low. Snus, on the other hand, is a pasteurized product on the one hand, and it has an extremely low uh, rate of cancer, like 1%. I mean, it's like that low. And I would suggest if that interests you to uh, just Google snus and health effects, and you're gonna find broad spectrum of stuff but there, if you, I was watching a video and uh, maybe I'll post it on here when I get done. And, um, and he said, uh, he's a doctor that uh, looked at all of the different studies and he kind of pointed out the flaws in a lot of studies, which was uh, interesting as well. Um, But he said that if cigarette smokers were to switch to snus, that he believed 99% of the deaths caused by cigarette smoking would go away just by them switching to snus because snus uh, supposedly is that much safer than cigarette smoke. Um, you know, smoking in general, it's the combustion that is uh, a bit of a problem. And I don't think that there's actually any correlation between nicotine and cancer. It's not the nicotine uh, that's the problem, but it's, uh, it's really the uh, combustion of the products. And the, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the grilled meat's not good for you. Um, and I don't, and it's the tars that are in there. And so that's why I believe in Europe, they use the filters a lot more because it pulls out the tars and that. But uh, anyway, I thought that was interesting. Snooze seems to have a very uh, low level of risk in using it. Not to say it's zero, but uh, nothing in life has a zero uh, risk of, uh, use. I mean, even eating from the grocery store, you know, uh, the, they used to line the tins of uh, canned vegetables with something that they later learned, you know, was very unhealthy for people. So they stopped doing that. Um, you just don't know. I mean, living is a uh, risk. Being alive is a risk of death. You know, we're all heading in that direction. Uh, there's no escaping it. Um, and just uh, walking outside puts you at some risk. Climbing in a car is very risky. I drive every day, you know, and I drive a lot of miles. The more you drive, the more you put your life at risk. Um, just because if you look at the rate of car accidents in this country, you know. So, nothing is risk-free, but snooze seems to have a very low risk. And it's very good. It has a nice uh, flavor. Uh, you can choose your nicotine level. If you uh, like more nicotine, you can get more. If you like less, you can get less. So I just thought I would share that with you. But that's all I've got for you guys this morning. Have a great day. Take care and bye.